John the Baptist is part of the opening of the scripture. The next day, he, John, saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him, Jesus. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following he said to them, what are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed Jesus was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The word of the Lord. You perhaps noted on the sign or in your bulletin. The sermon title today is Your Choice. Life presents us with opportunities to make choices. But as we get older, we become acutely aware that all choices have consequences, right? Amen. Good choices hopefully net us joy. Poor choices made in haste without much thinking can leave us with consequences that are painful, disappointing, and frustrating. John the Baptist had been called by God to prepare the way of the Lord, and he did it masterfully. He trusted that God knew exactly what he was doing. 
you remember that John was a rather fiery preacher. First of all, most of his adherents stood to listen to him. He dwelled in the desert outside the walls of cosmopolitan Jerusalem. And John was an interesting character. He wore camel's hair for clothing. His diet consisted of wild honey and locusts. And when he spoke to the congregation, which was a mixed group of Roman soldiers, believe it or not. People from the city, travelers who were on their way to and from but saw the crowd were curious about who this man was and what he was saying. Some of them were amazed at his language. John was not particularly pastoral in his approach. We're told that in one sermon, he looked at the people in front of him and he said, you brood of vipers, who told you to flee from the wrath that is coming? <coughs> I don't think that would fly too well in most Presbyterian congregations. <coughs> but then John got down to business when someone said, well, tell us what we're supposed to do. And do you remember what he said? If you've got two coats, give one to the man who has none. If you have more than enough to eat, share what you have with those who are hungry. John was very explicit. Earnestness before God was to be evident in the way we treated each other. It matters what we say to people. It matters if we are courteous or God forbid that we were deliberately rude. How do we show that we care and honor God? We show it by loving each other. Now, every one of us in this room has lived long enough to know that that's easier said than done. <clears throat> it's not easy to love people whose views we find abhorrent, whose behaviors we find offensive. And yet, we are expected to look for the good in each other in the hope that our intent to find good will be rewarded. Praise God, sometimes it is. And others we think, oh, why did I expend the energy for nothing? But the important fact is we tried. John knew that God was going to send a Messiah. And he was trying to prepare his listeners for the redemption that that Messiah would bring. He had one piece of information that the writer of John's Gospel shares. He knew that when the Holy Spirit appeared as a dove above the person God is sending, that would be the identifying characteristic that would signal him that this person was sent by God. And John saw the Holy Spirit dove come on Jesus. And he knew that what God had promised had become real in front of his own eyes. John had a group of very faithful disciples who, in their own gracious and subtle ways, 
took care of many of his needs. They listened with rapt attention to his teachings of what God expected of them. But now John is directing their attention elsewhere to someone else. He's standing with two of his disciples when he sees Jesus walking by. And he looks at his disciples and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And the two disciples start following Jesus. They leave John and they follow Jesus. And you heard, Jesus becomes aware that they're following him and he turns around and he said, what are you looking for? But they don't answer his question. They counter his question with another question. Where are you staying? And Jesus smiled and, come, I'll show you. And they followed him. What was it like to follow him, literally? They knew something was different about this Jesus. He had an aura about him. They liked being close to him. They liked the sound of his voice. They were intrigued with what he was saying, what he was telling them about God. They stayed with him. <clears throat> this is the part of the gospel where Jesus begins to call his own disciples. It would appear that Andrew found him and brought his brother. And when you and I hear in the Gospels that a person has a name change, that's a signal that something is going to change within that person. Not just the name change, but the whole quality of spirit changes. And so Simon Bar-Jonah, Simon son of John, is to become Cephas, Peter. And you're thinking it, right? Peter, the rock. In Greek, Peter means rock. Well... Jesus had an impact on these men that defied explanation. They had spent their lives in a sleepy little village. They made their living by fishing. Sometimes their labors were rewarded with abundance, and sometimes the fish went the other way. And you never knew what morning you got up to go fishing, whether the day would render abundance or nothing. Why did they follow him? What were they looking for? Jesus questioned. Do you suppose the man identified as the Lamb of God the Messiah would take them into life experiences which they never would know without him? Do you suppose they were ready for something new and different? What did they hope to find with Jesus? I have a hunch that some of their motivations were no different than some of the motivations that brings you and me to church. Some people come to church for a few minutes peace 
and an otherwise, and an otherwise hectic life. Some people come to church to get connected with other people who value the same things they do. Some people come for healing because they know they need it. Some people come for forgiveness because they know that God alone can grant it. What did they find? Following the one whom John the Baptist had identified as the Lamb of God. <laughs> what did they find indeed? They saw lepers cleansed. They saw 5,000 people fed on a couple of loaves and two fish. They saw lame people walk. They saw blind people see again. They saw deaf people hear again. And they saw a paralyzed man lying by the pool of Siloam. When Jesus said to him, pick up your mat and walk, he did. They saw him harshly questioned by members of the Sanhedrin. They were part of the mob at Pilate's gate. As Pilate questioned Jesus and then condemned him to be crucified. They saw him hang on a tree until he died. And three days later, in an upper room that was locked and filled with terrified disciples, they saw Jesus appear before them. All the disciples were there except Thomas. What an adventure their choice took them on. Adventure indeed. Some were martyred. Only John that we know of died of old age on the Isle of Patmos. Their choices changed the world. Our choices change us. What are you looking for? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.